Hello everyone, welcome to the 225 Q&A practice. We're going to start off with a more basic transcript and then I will read some other transcripts that are a little bit more dense. And this is going to be defense questioning, ready? Did Dr. Shook recommend physical therapy? No, I think Dr. Mukai did. Okay, let's get back to your present complaints. Have you ever had any complaints of pain to the base part of your neck, the base part of your skull and the neck area before this accident? No, well, before the accident, I was really limber and I could touch the ground, you know, and not bend my knees, but now I can't touch the ground. Touch the ground with your hands? Yes. Now, what about between your shoulder blades? Did you ever have any pain between your shoulder blades before this accident? No, I was like pain-free. Sometimes when you would go to the chiropractors, would it help or hurt you? Well, it would help. It would help you. And how long would it last? I'd say that day. What about the physical therapist? Would that be about the same? Yes. Okay. And, well, that's what I thought you were talking about was the physical therapist, Dr. Mukai. When I went in there, like my back would really hurt. And then when he would crack my back, it would relieve the pain, but it would come back slowly at a time. It would still hurt, but not as bad if you understand. The chiropractor that you saw was Dr. Carney? Yeah, but I'm not talking about him. Let's talk about him now, I understand. When you would see Dr. Carney, would he help or hurt you? I wasn't sure because back then, because I thought he was helping because he told me that I had scoliosis, so I did anything that he told me to make it go away. What do you understand scoliosis to be? Your backbone is crooked. Okay, do you know anybody else in your family who has that condition? My mother. Has anybody told you that it's something that you can inherit from your mother? Yes, and Dr. Kearney or Carney is the only doctor who's told you that he thinks you might have that? Yes. Has any of your other doctors ever told you that you may have a scoliosis condition? Not that I remember. Have any of your doctors told you that this might be a condition that could later creep up and not be evident until you're older? Do you understand my question? In a way. Let me rephrase that. I want you to be on the same wavelength as I am. Has any doctor that you may have treated with who may have considered the scoliosis in the back, has anybody ever told you that it may be this is something that they won't be able to determine until you're a little older? I've heard that, yes. Has any of your doctors ever said that to you? Yes. Or explained it to your mother while you were there? Yes, but I don't remember whom. I've heard of it, though. Are you involved in school sports at school? I used to be, but not anymore. This was when you were in, they call it middle school now. Did they call it junior high school? No, middle school. I couldn't sign up for anything in middle school because it happened in sixth grade, so before that. What types of activities were you engaged in in sixth grade when the accident happened? I wasn't like on a team, but my friends and I would get together. We'd play like soccer, softball, but after that, even for PE, I didn't really participate. In sixth grade, you wouldn't participate in PE? The end, the ending of sixth grade or seventh or eighth, I didn't. Did you participate in some physical activities in school in seventh and eighth grade, like games? Well, anything in PE. Not really, the things that wouldn't hurt me, I'd try, but once it started hurting me, I'd stop. So from that, I learned not to do it. What types of activities would hurt you? This is in the seventh and eighth grade we're talking about. What types of PE activities did you not engage in or that you had to curtail, stop short because you were having pain? Baseball, and let's see, what else was there? I really didn't do much in there because I gave the note to my teacher and she was like, let me help the aid or something. So I didn't worry about it. So you would help with the equipment and things like that? No, I just had to stand and watch and keep score and time. You had a note from one of your doctors? Yes, Dr. Mukai. Were you taking any medication during this two or three years that you were undergoing treatment? Advil. Did you ever have any prescription medication for your back? I don't remember, but I don't think so. You know the difference between prescription medication and something you can buy? Stuff you can't get over the counter. Exactly. Was it Dr. Mukai? I'm sorry. Dr. Mukai recommended that you take Advil? I think Dr. Billick did. Off the record. Back on the record. Do you still take Advil? Yes. How many times a week generally do you take Advil? I'd say about 10 or 12 times a week. Yes, like sometimes I take one a day, sometimes I take two a day, depending on how I felt, but I used to take more. Do you bring them with you to school? Yes. Do you have a note from one of your doctors allowing you to take Advil to school? In middle school, I kept it with the nurse, but at high school, I keep it in my locker so I don't... 
All right, do you still participate in physical education in high school now? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, because I talked to the teacher about it, and he even said with the doctor's note, I still would not be able to get an A. So because I love to get A's in all of my classes, and I don't want this to stop me from getting an A because it would hurt me in the future. Okay, so we're going to stop there. I'm going to switch transcripts. You are aware of the opinion that was one and the same man who earlier had entered the store and had participated in the robbery? Yes, just minutes earlier, moments rather than minutes. You are satisfied that they are one and the same? In my estimation, they are. At the time the police arrived on the scene, did you observe A? No, I did not. I observed Z in the presence of the police officer and he ran. He got away at that time? Yes, I have no further questions. Redirect. Mr. Sokol, did you give a description to the police of the man who you described on the charts as A? Yes, I did. What description did you give of his hair? His hair was black and very neatly cut and combed. Was it short or long? It was relatively short. Okay, looking at this gentleman's hair, was it the same length as the defendant in this case? No, I would say it was much shorter than that. What age did you give this individual? Approximately 40. I could be mistaken on that, as I told the officer at the time. He struck me as a person that was very neat and clean, and there was nothing outstanding about him. The man that was at the counter, was there any similarity between the two? Between Y and Z, are you asking? Yes, there was not too much similarly. I don't know what you mean by similarity. The characteristic features of the person? The color of the hair, for instance. Z had brown hair, and Y did not. Y had dark hair. After the individual that had the rifle was apprehended outside the store, how long a time did you look at him? After he was apprehended? After the apprehension. While he was being apprehended, I walked back into the store because I felt he was under police custody. They came in and asked me a number of questions about the robbery and asked if I could identify the individual. I went out and they took the individual out of the squad car and asked if I could identify him. It seems to me that that was the man who was carrying the rifle at the time of the robbery. Nothing further. Was it light out where they asked you to look at him? Was the area well lit? The area immediately in front of the store is very well lit from the store lights. We don't have any parking lot lights, but the store is brightly lit, and they were immediately in front of the store. Were you able to tell the color of the hair of the individual in the squad car at that time? Your Honor, I believe that misstates the evidence. I believe he said the individual was out of the squad car. Sustained. When he was out of the squad car, were you able to tell the color? I was not able to tell the exact color, but I know it was dark hair. Did you make an estimate of his age at that time? No, I did not. I made the estimate of his age at the time that the police were questioning me about him. Okay, was there any particular distinguishing features that you specifically recall? As I recall, the individual had a scar somewhere on his face. Looking at the individual in court here today, do you see a scar on his face? I see no scars on the individual's face. Where do you believe you saw a scar on the night in question? I believe that the scar may have been on the left side of his cheek. Did you mention that to anyone? I mentioned it to the arresting officers, the people who were questioning me at the time. Did you notice a scar at the time the robbery took place? I did not notice the scar per se, but at the time when the police officers were questioning me, I felt that the person who was carrying the rifle did have a scar. You are certain that at the time he exited the police squad car that this individual did have a scar. Is that correct or not? Would you repeat that, please? Are you convinced at this time that the person who stepped out of the squad car had a scar on his face? No, I am not. Okay, I'm going to switch transcripts one more time. Back to the doctor's testimony. Okay. Do you feel that if you would have been able to examine him shortly after this incident occurred, that you would have had a more clear picture of the individual you were examining? I think I would, yes. Now let's take a hypothetical doctor, assuming that you did examine him on December 6, 2012, and at that time he told you that he did recall getting his gun and running out of the house, and if we just add that statement to your other information, would your opinion as to his state of mind on December 6, 2012 change in any way whatsoever? I wouldn't think so. Could you tell us what your opinion would be with this added fact? 
Well, it would be based. I mean, it would have to be considered within the context of what was said. If he said suddenly he became clear and that he decided to go out and shoot somebody, that would be one thing. On the other hand, if this were just a progression of his delusional thinking and the fact that he felt the devil was after him in his hallucinatory experience, I think it would be of significance if that he did do the shooting while under the delusion. Again, within this reasonable medical certainty that we are talking about, do you feel that with this other fact, he would have had a capacity, mental capacity to know the difference between right and wrong at that time? Well, as I understand his state of mind, I would say no. I have nothing further. Mr. Enright, doctor, your ability to understand his state of mind is based on the facts that he gives you. Is that correct? That and other things that were shown to me. And people in this particular situation, wouldn't you say there would be a motivation factor to distort the information to their best interests? Well, I su su suppose there is a tendency for everyone to do that. It's not unusual. Well, not really. How much is another matter? If someone is charged with a serious felony offense, we assume there would be greater motivating factor. That would be a greater motivating factor, would it not? I would think so. Doctor, wouldn't you consider it significant if the defendant would tell one psychiatrist certain information, tell another psychiatrist a little less information? Wouldn't you feel that there is a mental process that may be working where the defendant is not going to tell the next doctor as much as he told the first doctor? I don't think that would be necessarily indeed I don't think that could be necessary. Are you not suspicious, doctor, of the people who tell one story to one person and another story to another person when it deals with the very factors that would affect their chances in the courtroom? Well, I think one has to be suspicious of all the interview material, which is a serious situation of this kind. Nothing further. Mr. Stein, doctor, the disease, acute alcoholic hallucinosis, is that a mental effect? Yes, it is. Does it also cause any other effects on an individual besides hallucinosis? Well, often the state of mind is clouded. This is an alcoholic hallucinosis we are talking about is clouded by the alcohol as well as the fact that the hallucinations appear. Could there be any way for you to determine whether or not someone was actually suffering from this type of amnesia or whether or not they were deliberately either fibbing or deliberately failing to recall? Well, no, I wouldn't have any way of knowing unless there were some other evidence to indicate that. In arriving at your opinion, is it based upon the facts that were given to you by the defendant, by Mr. Johnson, and also by the other facts that you gather independently? By all of the facts that were at my disposal. Is there anything unusual about inconsistent descriptions about events of this type of delusion from someone suffering from, say, alcoholic hallucinosis? There may be some inconsistencies. Generally, they are pretty firmly implanted, the hallucinatory experience in the person's mind, because it's usually a terrifying one and they remember it for a while. Do they ever recall their actions, their reactions to this hallucination? Yes, usually. I have nothing further. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, Doctor, you may stand down. You are excused. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Your Honor, we are expecting Dr. Hunter. It appears that he is going to be a little bit detained. I think we can proceed with the other witness if that is okay with counsel. Take the stand, please. State your name into the microphone, please. Went over a little bit there. That concludes our Q&A practice for the 225 class. Have a great day.